Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So today's video I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do an oil change on a Lexus 3IS. This is the turbo four cylinder variant for the 2016, 2017, this is an IS200. And then for like 2018, 19, I think 2020, uh, whatever they, pretty much the three IS after 2017, it's gonna be the IS300. Um, like I said, this is the two liter four cylinder turbo model. So let's go ahead and get started. So a couple things to suggest right off the bat is go ahead and get a tire truck. I'm gonna have links in the description down below uh, for Amazon, you can pick up some of these super cheap but make sure you get these under the rear tire, nice and snug. Before you raise your car up or do anything, you wanna make sure you have your e-brake on, and then obviously you're gonna to have to pop the hood to be able to do anything else. All right, so before you get started with this, there's gonna be a few tools that you're gonna need, such as this oil filter housing removal tool. This is actually super cheap on Amazon, you can pick that up. There's gonna be uh, links in the description down below for all these tools and everything you need, but you can pick up this oil filter housing removal tool, um, and that just uses a simple like socket set. Then you use this k and oil filter. Um, it's pretty much obviously a filter. It's great. It does come with this little tool that you're going to use to drain the oil out of your filter housing and obviously the two O-rings and then a crush washer. This is pretty much the exact same type that would be from like the dealership. However, also available on Amazon in this 24 pack for like, it was like seven or eight bucks for all 24 of these. Uh, you will need a new one of these every time you do an oil change. So just go ahead and pick up like the whole bag of them. But also we have some other bigger things. Obviously we're gonna need a funnel, uh, microfibers, cause oil probably will spill. So make sure you have some of those or even just old shop rags or anything like that. I got this giant pan right here. Uh, so I can put the oil catch pan on top of that. Just to have a little bit of extra um, reach. So if anything does splash or spill. This right here is super amazing. This oil drain pan. This middle piece actually pops out. I have a couple extensions and it'll pretty much raise up and you can get it to set as high or low as you want. Um, so whenever you drain your oil, it can go straight down into here. And then there's also a pour spout on that side. So when you stand it up, when you're done, you can pour it back into your old jug and be able to dispose of that. But also we're going to be using um, the SAE 20, 0W20 and uh, this is the oil that you definitely want to use. It actually says it right here on the little cap, the 0W20. And then also a socket set. That's like the most important thing. But there will be links in the description down below. For Amazon, you can pick up all of this stuff, including all of these things right here, these. And also I'll include like an epoxy floor uh, link as well because having this is super amazing for doing oil changes. You just take like any kind of rag, wipe up any spills and it doesn't stain, it doesn't mess it up or anything. So I'll also include a link for that. But let's go ahead and look at over at the engine bay. I do have pretty much a full carbon engine bay. This is all custom one off, but everybody does have like these little covers. Uh, you can reach that right here through the top of this. However, you might spill oil and it might get on top. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop this off and you can just raise it straight up and it's just like three little tabs and those just pop right off and I can set this aside. And now you can see the top of the engine and obviously your fills right here. It's a lot easier to get to and then there's gonna be your dipstick. But let's go ahead and get started. All right, so then where the oil drain plug is and the oil filter housing, it's actually behind all of these covers. So you're actually gonna go back quite a bit until you get to like right here. And this right here is actually your oil filter housing. And this right here is actually a drain plug to drain that. That's what that little clear tube is. But right here is actually your oil drain plug and it's sitting right there. So it's actually pretty close. And luckily all this is exposed. You don't need any covers to be removed or anything. So let me go ahead and get started with unscrewing the oil cap on top so that the air can flow through to be able to drain both of these. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start with the oil drain plug, which is located right here. You're gonna use a 14 millimeter socket and it'll fit right onto that. And I do have my oil catch pan right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get that started. It wasn't super tight. And then I'm just gonna unscrew the rest of it by hand because the oil will probably start splashing right out shortly after. But I'm gonna go ahead and swap out gloves real quick and put some rubber ones on. Then I'm gonna go ahead and continue with the uh, process. All right, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and do the rest of this by hand. There we go. 
I'm just going to go and let the oil just flow out. This is why I switch gloves. <laughs> So when it comes to the oil drain plug, I went ahead and pulled off the old crush washer, which is this one right here. You can see how it's like bent just a little bit, but comparing it to the new one, you can see that they're pretty much identical. They have like this blue kind of coating on them, and you can see that the edges are silver. I can go ahead and like line these up, and they are the exact same size. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw away the old one, go ahead and stick the new one on there. And we can go ahead and pop this back on the car and close up that drain. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and gonna put it in by hand first. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use like a shop rag, which in my case, some old dirty microfibers that I've washed. I'm just gonna go ahead and wipe up all the extra oil. And then just go ahead and gonna get that nice and hand tight, get a little snug. And then just go ahead and tighten it just a little bit. All right, so now when it comes to the oil filter housing, we're just going to go ahead and take that 14 millimeter off. And I'm using this little extension right here. I will have a link in the description down, the, down below so you can pick up some extensions. But I'm just going to go ahead and stick that directly into this little hole and then be able to unscrew just this little metal end cap. But first I want to make sure I have my oil drain pan placed right underneath that. There we go. So this is a little snug for me. And actually in my case, it looks like the entire thing is coming off. So it looks like the dealership actually tightened that way too tight because I want to take off just this little metal piece and not the entire housing. But it looks like the entire housing is wanting to come off. So I guess what I'm going to have to do is just go ahead and unscrew this entire thing. Uh, what you would normally do is take this little tool and you would line it up because there's three little notches on one side and then one on the other side. So you're going to line it up and it'll gonna hook right onto place. And then you use your wrench and then you unscrew and pull out the entire housing. Um, in my case, I'm not gonna be able to do that because like I said, the dealership tightened this little drain plug way too tight that's actually pulling off the entire housing. But I will explain how this works. Whenever you take this out, there will be like a little circle hole and oil will kind of drip out of it a little bit. And this little tool comes with like your new filter and stuff. And then there's like three little prongs on this side you would actually take it and pop it, like it'll snap up into place and it'll actually allow the oil to drain out from your housing uh, through this little, this little kind of nozzle thing right into your drain pan. And then whenever you take off the entire housing, you don't have a bunch of oil in there. Uh, in my case, I'm gonna have to pull off the entire housing and then oil's probably gonna go all over the place. So that's what happens when you are not able to drain that properly through that little drain plug. So thank you to the dealership that tightened that way too tight and caused this to happen. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and let that continue to drip. And then we're just gonna go ahead and take the oil filter housing. I'm just gonna dump out the old filter into here so it can continue to drain. And then I'm gonna clean this up, try to get that little valve off for next time and then I can show you guys what it looks like. All right, so I was able to get that off, but I did have to use, I literally had to use an impact driver just to like break this loose. Like that was absolutely ridiculous. Like the dealership, I'm assuming they tightened the entire housing just by screwing that tight, like tightening the whole thing. When in reality, you're supposed to use the tool to tighten the housing separate from a little drain plug. So the drain plug, I finally got it off. And that's what the hole looks like. And then the little tool that comes with your oil filter, that'll just literally snap right into place. And that'll just kind of snap right up in there. 
and that'll allow all the oil to drain out of the housing so that you don't have to worry about it going all over the place. But, oh, just fell out. There will be like a little uh, O-ring right here. Just gonna go ahead and take that out. And I'm just gonna go ahead and take the new one and stick it right up into place. So then I'm gonna get my fingers kind of greasy from some of the oil that I have right here. I'm just gonna go ahead and rub that around onto the new O-ring to kind of keep it nice and like lubricated because you don't want it to dry out. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and take this oil housing drain plug and I'm just gonna go ahead and stick it right back on here. And then for now, I'm just gonna hand tighten it. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and take off this O-ring that's right here, which if it's hard to grab, there's these little tools that you can get. Uh, there will be a link in the description so you can pick up these as well. And you can just hook it right underneath that O-ring and just pull it straight off of there. You're gonna take your new one and you're just gonna go ahead and slide it right down over top, right into that groove. Same thing as before, I'm just gonna go ahead and reach into here, get a little bit of oil on my finger and go ahead and rub it onto that O-ring so it's nice and hydrated and lubricated and whatnot. There we go. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and take my oil filter and I'm just gonna go ahead and slide it down it's going to have kind of a snug fit, but just like that, it's into place, ready to go, and ready to be installed. So what I'm going to do uh, right before I install this, I'm actually going to pour a little bit of oil down inside of here, and then I'm going to screw it up into the car. But now I have this ready to go, I'm just going to go ahead and hold it tight, and then I'm going to use the wrench and tighten that oil drain plug. And then like I said, when we screw this back into the car, I'm assuming the dealership tightened the entire housing like from the drain plug causing it to like almost like seize up but this housing goes over top of that and then it tightens it from the housing and not from the drain plug all right so now they have that completely drained i'm just going to go ahead and grab a rag and wipe down everything that the oil got onto because it kind of went everywhere let's go ahead and wipe around a little bit on the inside right there Alrighty, I think that's all good and cleaned up. So now let me just go ahead and move the drain pan out of the way. And I'm just gonna go ahead and take the new housing with the new filter and everything. I'm just gonna go ahead and screw it back up into place. And at first we're just gonna get it as tight as we can by hand. And then now I'm just gonna go ahead and take my wrench And I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten the drain plug a little bit right here on the bottom, which as you see the entire housing's actually spinning, which shows that I did tighten it all the way previously. So let's go ahead and remove that. We're gonna stick the housing tool onto the housing and we're just gonna go ahead and tighten it with that. And right there, you kind of feel where it gets a little snug and we're good to go. I do see a little bit of oil, so I'm just gonna go ahead and wipe that off with this rag. I'm just gonna go ahead and double check the drain plug. And now we're good to go to go ahead and add new oil into the car. So you definitely wanna use a funnel because obviously you don't wanna spill it everywhere. But whenever you look down into that hole, it actually is almost like completely covered, just a little tiny slot. So you definitely don't wanna pour oil directly into that and have it slosh out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use this funnel. I'm gonna have to hold it in place. And then I can go ahead and dump in the five quarts of oil. It does take the entire five quart jug. So uh, it's actually convenient because you can just pour that entire thing right down into here. And then after we pour that in, we're gonna go ahead and check the oil. And I would suggest having a uh, shop rag handy because this might spill. And also whenever you pour this, it might run down the front edge of the jug. So I'm just gonna go ahead and have this handy and go ahead and start pouring. Sometimes it can help if you actually take the dipstick out just to allow some air to be able to get into the line there. So whenever you're pouring, it'll actually kind of pour nice and smooth. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and wipe off the dipstick. As you see, there's two little dots right here. 
So as you see, there's two little dots right here. We definitely want to be in between those two. So we're just going to go ahead and stick this down into place. And then pull it back out and check the levels. Which, yep, we are definitely right between those or closer to the top one. So it is on a little bit of a, the higher end. It does require 4.9 quarts of oil. So I just went ahead and put in the five. Like I said, it is on the uh, kind of like the higher end, like almost right at that uh, top little dot, which that's fine. You definitely want to be between those, but you don't, you don't want to be over. So if you are over, you will need to drain a little bit of it out. But in my case, I'm like right at it. So I feel pretty safe leaving it how it is. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick the dipstick back into place. I'm going to screw the cap right back onto here and put the cover back on and then we'll be done. All right, guys, so now that the oil change is done, I'm just going to go ahead and drop the car back down to the ground. And then I'm just going to go ahead and take it out, drive around the block a little bit, let the uh, new oil start to circulate through, start to warm up. And then I'm going to pull it back in the garage. I'm going to keep it parked like, right here on the floor. And I'm going to check here in just like a little bit to see if there's any oil dripping out to make sure that everything's good to go. All right, guys, so now I'm going to go ahead and show you how to reset the little maintenance, uh, little warning thing. And yes, I do have carbon fiber trim on the steering wheel. There's going to be links in the description down below so you guys can pick up some of that. Also, some carbon fiber on the glove box right there. So definitely go check that out. And I do have a carbon fiber button cover. But I'm just going to go ahead and turn on the auxiliary without starting it. So boom, just like that. Let me zoom in here. So then what we're going to use is the little menu button right here. And then we're going to use like the little arrows to toggle around, but we're going to hit this button right there. Let's see if we can focus on it. That one right there. <laughs> and then it's going to cause your screen to shift over. And then you're just going to go ahead and back out of that. You're going to use the little arrows to cycle all the way over to your maintenance or your settings. And you're going to scroll down to, uh, let's see, vehicle settings, scheduled maintenance, Reset data, yes. And then you're just gonna go back. Oil maintenance, and yes. And just like that, it's been reset. Super quick and easy. But if you guys like this video, definitely get on and hit that like button down below. Also, don't forget to check out all the links in the description down below. You can pick up pretty much all this stuff on Amazon. You can have it here like the next day or depending on where you're at within the next week. So definitely go check out all those links to be able to pick up all the supplies and the tools that you're going to need for this job. But if you have any other questions, let me know in the comments or any other comments you have, definitely put them down there. But like, subscribe, and as always, thank you for watching.